Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios. I am your stock mentor, Brian Johnson, and end of the day, bears rule again. But I didn't really break any of those lower levels we had looked at. There was some consolidation in here. Look at that sideways chop before we finally broke out of it. Uh, we did break this 9800 level. I said 98 for the more aggressive, 9750. For the more conservative, we reached 9753.84. So some of you may or may not have taken that trade today. If you did, below 9800, you made some money, not a lot. Um, don't know if I'd be holding in, into tomorrow, but it, it, it's fine. We're in a bear market. There's absolutely still nothing broken here from the bear side. Uh, will the bounce come? Yeah, but we don't know when. And I'm going to reiterate what I always say over and over. That is, don't call the bottom. You're killing yourself if you are. If you don't know uh, how to really properly trade, or if you're consistently getting yourself, you know, destroyed in the markets, uh, the the worst thing you can do is try to call tops and try to call bottoms. Uh, but it's what most amateurs want to do. If that's you, stop. <laughs> Please <laughs> don't do it anymore. You got to quit that. <laughs> Learn how to properly trade. And uh, take that out of the equation. Quit quit doing that. That'll destroy your account faster than anything. If we go right to the daily, you can see us coming right back towards this blue line. I maybe I could, I could tweak this line a little bit, but I really like it where it's at. Um, yeah, I could probably tweak this ever so slightly and, and maybe get a, a little bit more up-to-date uh, line here. But you can see where we're now starting to cross back below this. Uh, on this next leg down and the trend here has been and is still actually pretty strong here volume wasn't uh, nearly what it was yesterday uh, but uh, it's still down so still bears bears holding on here nasdaq did fall apart had a big gap down and moved down as well something still holding up well i noticed baidu i don't think uh, dropped all that much today although if i'm being honest i think baidu's in for a, a pretty sizable fall here eventually um but uh, as it is the nasdaq dropping below these lower levels and this is what we were watching remember i talked about this 1740 ish level 1750 ish level we just got down to that 1740 level today if we take a look at the daily perfectly in line with this big line of support i have sitting down here so we did break this blue line and it has been downhill for the nasdaq ever since down 1.41 percent on the day but coming back into very staunch support can the nasdaq hold it we'll have to wait and see at this point i'm not convinced but we'll see if we get some sort of hold of this area tomorrow from a weekly standpoint now look where out look uh, look what else we're back to the 200 week moving average right below us about another five points below us is the uh nasdaq's 200 week moving average so we're talking about this heavy heavy support right here and the 200 so this would be a pretty major break for the NASDAQ. If you like to short the NASDAQ, for whatever reason, that's your place to get short is right below that 1730-ish level. SPX on a 60-minute also falling apart. Notice how we broke this level today, and it held, 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 held. Try to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, give them a day to bring it back up. They couldn't do it all day long. Notice how this area held all day. Eventually, the bears said, okay, we'll take over, and they did. End of the day, they just ran this thing back down again. Nothing looking very good for the bulls. Not even, and I'm not talking just the short term, guys. I'm talking longer term here. <laughs> Things just don't look good uh, for the bulls right now. SPX on a daily, falling below these lower levels. Mentioned uh, the 1055 area, mentioned the 1040 area, places to get short if you weren't already. And these were uh, obviously plays today. That were wide open to you, especially in the last hour of the day, giving you a little bit of return on your money uh, to the short side. But you can see where we have really, really fallen hard here and now down about 100 points from where we were when we started this whole move. From a weekly standpoint, also starting to just pierce this lower line down here. There's not a lot of room left here on the weekly. Closes down here at the end of the week would not spell 
good things once again for the Bulls. Uh, this is getting down into a very, very dangerous area if the Bulls want to try to make any attempt at pulling this thing back up and moving it upwards. Uh, this was a huge area way, way, way back here, I mentioned, of overhead resistance. And boy, it has been nothing but downhill since. Let's wait and see where this closes at the end of the week. But as it looks right now, Bulls got some work to do here coming into the, the first part of the month. VIX on a, uh, a VIX on a daily up as well today, confirming what we saw in the markets. Uh, here on the weekly, right back into this red area and holding there so far. Uh, trend is pretty strong here in the VIX. Once again, we're going to wait. This is a weekly candle, so we'll see where this finishes come Friday night. But staying up here in this area only leads to more fear potentially down the road, taking us back up to maybe this 50 level in the VIX. That means a sizable drop in the markets. Apple on a 60 minute also seeing the hit today. Uh, had this nice channel. We're not able to, uh, to, to, to break out of it. Here we broke to the downside, falling below this level here, my 257.50 area, which we've talked about a lot in the past. And once that area was broken, guess what? That was it for the bulls. Was, they could not get back above it, and then it fell down from there today. That is a beautiful $6 move over the last couple days in Apple, even today testing 257.50 and higher and not being able to hold that area. So uh, good shorting opportunities coming into light from Apple. Now we are getting a little bit stretched coming down into this little area here of support. Let's see if that'll hold. If not, it's this blue line. That would be my next kind of line in the sand I'd be watching. From a weekly, you can see us clearly now below the blue line. I don't think it's going to be retrievable now. I think Apple's 270 down to 251 quite a sizable drop any of you that took this short right below here did very very well on that i said this blue line would eventually uh, end up beating apple and i think we're at that point now my next line here is on the from a weekly standpoint the, the, the 20 no question 242 area i see a lot of support down there so would not be surprised to see that happen over the next week or two that apple actually makes this 20 week moving average in the 240 area fas on a 60 minute also dropping down and below these levels we had been looking at below 1950 giving you a good entry to the short side from a daily standpoint also continuing to drop this was a great place to get short yesterday opportunities today not quite as good nothing too uh, definite today on the date from a daily time frame but the 60 minute definitely giving you entries and here's Faz coming back up to where yeah this little overhead resistance area that I have pointed out here break up over 17 so we've had great entries on Faz pretty much textbook here too if you guys have been following along running right up into these overhead support areas now we talked about this from a swing traders perspective we have cleared by a good about you know 15 cents here or so the 200 day moving average so all of this consolidation could potentially be playing out into something a little bit more sinister here. Maybe looking at this as an A, a B, and a C correction for you Elioticians. If that's the case, this could be the start, or the middle, I should say, of a wave three to the upside. Confirmation, I think, comes not until we get above 18, but that does not mean we don't have some good entries to the long side if you're an FAZ player. I do have... A uh, student up in Canada who has been crushing this thing lately. So good job, Jason. You're a stud. And here we are trying to move above this area. Any pushes back above about 17, let's call it 1760, 1770 area, still gives you opportunities to the long side in FAZ. I would then put my stop just right below this 200. See what happens never know maybe it holds maybe it doesn't we're just barely above the 200 and this is the first time we've been above the 200 so i'll give the bears a shot to get back below it but as of right now not looking so good and that'll do it for today's video guys you saw what the bulls tried to do they tried 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 to pull it up and they could not do it the bears yanked it back down again don't get ahead of yourself don't let your bias get in the way you hear me preach about this all the time if you've been coming to the site and watching the videos, you should be doing just fine in your trading. 
We've been very good lately in the calls and what to do and being careful about what? Letting the charts tell us what to do, okay? Too many people out there want to get their bias involved in it, and they want to tell you, oh, it's going up. And they'll lay out a good argument for it. And sometimes even I'm convinced, yeah, I think this guy could be right. But you know what? That's not the proper way to trade. Let the charts tell you which direction to go. They're ultimately the ones that, that make the decisions in these markets. The charts will tell you. And by listening to the charts, following the charts, you can then better become a more consistent and a more profitable trader. So stick with us, guys. We're doing well here at the Stock Mentor. Pass the link around. Let's help everybody else out, too. We'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Bye.